Hi, everyone. Can I please remind you to state your name and outlet before asking a question? Paola, can you talk about the match today? Uh, yeah, I think it was a really uh, tough match. I think it was a really good one as well uh, because she played an amazing level. I think I had to ri rise my level um, every set and um, at the final third set, I think I played uh, my best and it, it was the only option if I wanted to win. So I'm really proud of it. First question for David. Hola Paula, David Díaz Franca para la agencia de FEC en Indian Wells. Enhorabuena por la victoria, por la gran final que has hecho. David, uh, questions in English first. If Sorry, you want to ask in Spanish, we'll do yeah, it at the end. I can do it in English, no worries about it. Thanks. Congratulations, Paula. Uh, what a great final. Um, just want to ask you, um, how did you, you know, deal with all the emotions, the feelings? It was an epic match. How did you, you know, manage, you know, to stay calm and focused uh, throughout the game? Yeah, it was really tough. Uh, I think she was playing on a high, very high level. And um, in that moment, I started to focus um, at the final of the third set. I started to focus on what to do every point, every ball and um, and not think uh, anything else. I think that was quite important because it was a final. I really wanted to win it so bad, but um, I tried not. The, um, I tried to focus on, on what to do and nothing else. Next question for Craig. Well, Craig Averill here at Indian Wells. Um, can you, it was, this was, congratulations, this was probably the, the, the women's match of the year. Um, it was extraordinary tennis. What did it feel like actually being in the middle of that? And what did, what was going through yourself emotionally when that last point was finally won and you collapsed to the court? Yeah, it was a really tough match. I think it was like a roller coaster, um, mentally, emotionally. Uh, it was my first final in a in a 1000, so I, I had a lot of emotions. Uh, I was playing Vika; she's a great champion. I admire her since I was a little girl, so that was a, another thing. And uh, yeah, it was amazing. I, I'm still a little bit in shock that what happened right now, but um, in that moment, I was super excited and super proud of what I did, did after three hours fighting on court. Next question for David Kane. Hi, Paula, David Kane from tennis.com. It's a pleasure to see you. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just, with the week that you've had beating four top 20 players and Azarenka, what do you think a week like this has taught you about your tennis and about the way that you're able to compete with the best? Well, um, I think uh, the first thing that, I, that I've that i learned this week is that nothing is impossible, that uh, if you fight, if you work, um, after all, after all these years, um, you can achieve anything. So um, that's the first message that I get, um, that I see that I, that could happen and, um, and to dream. Sometimes um, you have tough moments and uh, in my case, I've been through tough moments and uh, I never stopped dreaming. And that's what kept, kept me working hard and uh, believing and, until the last moment. And today was the same. So I'm really proud of it. Of it. Setbacks, potential moments that could maybe derailed your season. How have you been able to manage those disappointments to be able to keep coming back stronger each and every time? You know, uh, this year I had, of course, I had a roller coaster year and disappointments and everything. But after all I've been through in my life, it wasn't disappointments. So uh, that's a good part. When you suffer a lot and when you're young, uh, when you have a little bit of disappointment, you don't feel it like that. So that's a good part of um, what happened this year. Of course, um, I have bad moments, but compared to the things that I've been through, it's nothing. So <laughs> for me, it's OK. Thank you so much. Next question for Chris. Hi, Paula. Um, I wonder if you could talk a little bit about just sort of the path to believing that you belong um, out there in a final like that, because it's obviously one thing to have the shots. It's quite another to be able to hit them under that kind of pressure and that kind of moment. Could you just talk about how you've gotten there and whether you how you felt there today and you surprised yourself at all? Yeah, I felt I felt really good. I really loved how uh, to play outside out there, and um, it was a really tough match. I know uh, she she was going to play amazing because this kind of champions they play very good on the finals. So I knew I had to play um, a very good one as well and to fight, and uh, that's what I did. And 
and I enjoyed. Of course, I suffered uh, in, in some moments because it was my first um, final, like a uh, big final like this one. And I really wanted to win it. So, of course, you suffer. But um, I think I enjoyed it because uh, I think we played a very good match. Just quickly about your own path to believing in yourself. You talked about the fact that what you've been through, I'm sure, has made you stronger. But how, how difficult has it been to get to a point where you believe in a match like that? Well, uh, after all, if I never stopped working hard and um, now I have an amazing team that's helping me day by day that I feel I feel comfortable there. I feel happy and um, I I start believing slowly, of course, winning one match, then another one. And I, I think the key as well is to work very hard and uh, and to, uh, as I said before, to dream, because, uh, of course, uh, every morning I wake up and I was I, and my dream is to win a tournament like this or to win a Grand Slam. And of course, that keeps me motivated um, to keep uh, working and to always believe. Thank you. Next question for Reem. Hi, Paula. This is Reem Abu Lil from the National UAE. Congratulations. Uh, Paula, considering what you were just saying, things that were tough for you between the juniors and now, but what would you tell your junior self? What kind of advice would you have given yourself and perhaps give other junior players now who are looking to make the transition? What, what's the biggest lesson learned for you? I think that the, the toughest thing on when, when you're a junior and you're a good junior um, are the expectations. And um, do you th people think that when you're a good junior next year, you have to be a top 20 player or top 10 uh, player and uh, you have a lot of expectations. People wait a lot of you, uh, put a lot of pressure on you. So I think the key is um, to have a good team and uh, to work day by day, to not listen um, a lot. And um, and that's a little bit to make it simple. Sometimes we complicate things and uh, I think that, and to enjoy. Of course, it's very complicated. Uh, a lot of people were texting me today, try to enjoy the final. I was like, yes, I wish. But uh, of course, um, try to enjoy, not the, in the matches because you get very nervous, but try to enjoy the journey. Thank you. Next question for Karen. Yeah, hi Paula, Karen Hall from the Women's Tennis Club. Um, can we talk a little bit about your team? You just mentioned expectations and I think also some things about perspective. Throughout the week, how were they able to kind of help you stay on even pace? So that you weren't up too high, maybe didn't get too down in, in a bad moment, although you didn't have much. How did um, they help you through that? Yeah, I think we we were like a, we had a very normal week. We were doing I don't know. We went to play golf. Uh, we went to have dinner in nice places. We went shopping. I was playing very. I was very focused on the matches and on the practice. But then we had. Um, a little bit of everything. And I think that's very, very important because in my past, I was like all day, like super, um, fo of course you have to be focused, but um, super like um, not happy and uh, on my room. And I thought that that was like being professional. And I think uh, you have to try to find, find the balance on that because if you don't enjoy outside, uh, it's impossible to, to have a uh, good results. So um, I think my team is doing a very good job on that. Next question for Cindy. Hi, Paula, congratulations. Um, you've spoken a lot about the transition and, and the difficulties you've had in your career. Have you ever worked with a sports psychologist? And if so, what's the most important thing that you've learned about yourself and about your game? Yeah, I've, I've, I've worked with a lot of them. I think it's very important in tennis. Uh, maybe, I don't know, the 80, 70% it's mental. So um, I think it's very important to work that part. And uh, I've, I've worked everything, the expectations, the pressure. And uh, now I'm working with him, try to to find the balance of hard work. And as I said before, enjoy. And um, I think uh, that's why I'm I'm winning so many matches. And uh, that's why um, I'm having a good year, because I find I found that balance that um, I have like my work time and I, I do that 100 percent. But then I, I have time to to turn off uh, my mentally. And I think um that's a little bit the key. Thank you. Next question for Courtney. 
Hey, Paola, congratulations, Courtney Nguyen, WTA Insider. Um, I just, is it safe to say that coming into Indian Wells was the, the finals, the WTA finals in the back of your mind, not even something you were thinking about? Was it something you were thinking about? Because obviously now you're, you're very much in, in the hunt to qualify. Uh, no, I, I wasn't even thinking about that <laughs> at the beginning of the week. I think I started thinking about that when I was maybe in quarterfinals or something like that. I didn't want to want to see it, but I I start thinking about it, and um, yeah. But at the beginning, it was impossible for me to think about that. And when I saw the draw, it was a really really tough one. So uh, yeah, it was tough for me to think that I could win this tournament. And does do you think that you do you know what your schedule then looks like going forward? As I guess um, you're not in Moscow, obviously, but but uh, after that, do you plan on playing? Um, it depends because now, of course, it's a goal to to go to the with the finals. So if I, I'm in, I'm gonna rest until I don't know. Maybe I want to play a Fed Cup. Um, I will try to play play that, and then uh, of course with the finals. If I if not, I'm not a uh, hundred percent in, maybe I will play in uh, Club Club Napoca. I I don't know, but um, I hope I'm I'm in and I can rest <laughs> some days. <laughs> Thank you. Next question for Pablo. Hello, pa hello, Paola. Congratulations. I was thinking about uh, if there was any moment at the match, uh, the, the most critical point in the match, where you thought maybe on the on the uh, eighth game of the third set you were four four and you had like three unforced errors. How did you? Was that the most critical part in the on the on the game? And how did you manage to to come back? Huh? Yeah, that was the toughest one uh, for one moment. I. I had some negative thoughts there, but um, I think I overcame very good. And on the next game, uh, I knew that for any player in the world, even that you're a champion, that's very tough to close the match. So I knew I had to stay there um, as much as I can, keep fighting. And um, and I I tried to fight every point in the 5-4 and I, I could win that that game. And then I, I think I played very good from the 5 ball to the 7-6. I think I played really, really good. Did, did, did the the thought of losing ever cross your mind at that point when you were five four down in the third set? No, I don't. I never think of, of I can lose until I lose. So um, that's a good thing that I always worked with my psychologist. But yeah, I I had negative thoughts that uh, oh my god, I had an opportunity here and I just lost it. Of course, I had that in my mind, but uh, I never thought about losing. Thank you. Hey, last question in English for Andrew, and then we'll move on to Spanish. Hey, Paula, um, congratulations. Uh, obviously a great match. Um, you know, you were 87th in the world this time last year. Um, you'll, you'll rise to 13th uh, when the, the new rankings come out. Just wondering if you uh, had envisioned such a rise uh, this when the season began and, and what your thoughts are on that now. No, of course not. I've never uh, thought that in one, one year after will be, I don't know, 13 or I don't know my ranking right now after winning. But of course, I never thought that uh, that would happen that fast. And I would have this year because I think it's amazing. But um, yeah, I think I worked very hard in the preseason. I always was, maybe I didn't have the best results in January, February, in the first uh, months and last this year. But I knew I was working very well and I knew that results would come. I never expected this, but um, I, I'm very happy that what's happening, I'm a little bit still in shock of what happened today because um, winning a tournament like this, it's always been a dream. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. We'll now move on to Spanish. Okay. Uh, Nacho, would you like to go ahead? Hola Paula, eh, lo primero, enhorabuena, la verdad es que hemos vibrado aquí y sufrido muchísimo en España contigo, y, pero bueno, ha merecido la pena y te quería preguntar por los logros por, que, has, que has hecho de hoy de una atacada, con lo que, en lo que, por lo que se refiere al tenis español, porque nunca había ganado ninguna jugadora allí y eres la, la cuarta que, o sea, la quinta que gana un trofeo de esta categoría, ¿no? En la historia, ¿qué te dice eso? ¿Qué... Sí, la, la verdad que significa mucho para mí. Eh, siempre he dicho que mi sueño era ganar torneos grandes, estar en, en las rondas finales. Creo que poco a poco 
ya lo estaba consiguiendo, pero obviamente ganar un torneo así es algo espectacular, no me lo esperaba. Eh, hace un año me, me llegan a decir que gano eh, un torneo así, no me lo creo eh, y no me lo esperaba para nada, pero la verdad que muy, muy contenta y aparte más contenta aún después del partido que he hecho hoy contra una campeona como ella que creo que ya era de esperar, yo sabía que iba a sacar un, un rendimiento muy, muy alto en, en este partido porque al final esta gente ha, ha nacido para jugar finales y sabía que yo tenía que jugar también a mi máximo y, y la verdad que pues ganar una final así es, aún se hace, es más especial. Luego te pones un décima en el ranking, creo, y octava en la carrera, que es una pasada de repente, eso también es una locura. Sí, la verdad que está siendo un gran año. Eh, me estaba fastidiando un poco el ranking congelado antes de llegar aquí porque después del año decía, jolín, es que no estoy en el ranking que me merezco después de los resultados y me estaba fastidiando un poco, pero lo he podido ahora poner todo a la normalidad, entonces eso me, me pone contenta y, y final también, yo no era mi objetivo a principio de semana lo del Wita Finals, pero ahora poder eh, ver que casi estoy clasificada es, es un sueño. Pues nada, disfruta de la semana. Ahora. Gracias. Gracias. Next question for Christian. ¿Cómo estás, eh, Paula? Felicitaciones eh, por, por el trofeo. Eh, para los ojos de, de, de los que vimos el partido, eh, a, ni, a nivel del circuito femenino, para nosotros fue el mejor del año. Eh, quería preguntarte si vos ahora que estás eh, en frío, eh, analizás el partido y decís si realmente fue eh, el, el partido del año. ¿Lo, ¿Lo sentís así? Yo creo que sí. Yo creo que sí, porque es que ha sido un nivel muy alto. Yo dentro de la pista, ha habido momentos cuando me ha ganado el segundo que... Estaba un poco agobiada porque tenía que sacar más nivel. Me, me estaba ella, ella me ha hecho mejor hoy en el partido. Mutuamente creo que nos íbamos las dos apretando mucho y cada una sacaba, cuando una sacaba el nivel, la otra lo sacaba más. Y, y ha sido un partido muy, muy duro y creo que ha sido un nivel muy alto, con mucha agresividad. Y, y puedo, no sé, desde, al final no me he visto el partido, pero yo desde dentro lo he visto durísimo. Y, y si vosotros lo habéis visto así, puedo confirmar que ha sido muy duro. Y, y, y mi última pregunta es si tiene un sabor especial para vos haberle ganado este trofeo a, a Vika con todo lo que significa ella en el circuito femenino y, y por todo lo que representa para vos también. Totalmente, se lo he dicho en la entrega y, y lo sigo pensando. Es una persona que con yo con 14, 15 años la veía ganando Grand Slams y, y siempre su estilo de juego me gustaba mucho. Creo que es un estilo de juego donde yo me puedo sentir un poco identificada y siempre he dicho que quería jugar eh, como ella y poder jugar una final contra ella pues es algo muy inspirador y ganarlo encima pues se me pone la piel de gallina porque es una persona que a mí me ha inspirado desde pequeña y, y gracias a jugadoras como ella o como mi ídola también que era Shara Popa eh, yo estoy donde estoy porque quieras o no intentas eh, querer ser ellas, eh, quieres eh, a ver cómo hacen es, ese entreno, cómo pegan a la derecha, cómo gestionan en ese momento, al final son gente donde estás las has mirado como ejemplo entonces eh, poder ganarle aún se hace más especial Gracias Next for Angel. Hola, buenas noches eh, Ángel Rigueira, Fueron el Mundo Deportivo Barcelona Buenas noches eh, Paula y muchas felicidades Gracias Bueno, no sé, si hoy, eh, no sé si hoy es el día que te sientes ya una de las grandes y ¿Cuál es el próximo paso que puedes dar para seguir mejorando esto, esta, esta gran progresión que has hecho este año? Eh, seguir igual, ganando torneos así, para mí <ríe> es el siguiente paso. No, pero seguir, eh, la verdad que sí, seguir igual. Estoy disfrutando eh, fuera de la pista, estoy trabajando mucho. Eh, ya juego con jugadoras eh, las mejores del mundo, que es lo que siempre he querido desde... Desde pequeña que, que gané el Roland Garros Junior, pues ya siempre mi sueño ha sido estar aquí, eh, lo estoy y eso es lo que me hace más feliz. Obviamente ganar los torneos aún más porque voy cumpliendo sueños, pero ya poder estar viviendo finales como estas, eh, pues estar, poder estar viviendo eh, todos esto, estos es, es ya eh, todo para mí. Has hablado de, del calendario y viene muy... Considerando que te clasifiques para Guadalajara, que lo tienes, parece ser que muy bien, eh, ¿Es compatible con jugar también en las Billy Jean King Cup? ¿Puedes hacer frente a las dos cosas? Me gustaría, voy a esforzarme al máximo para hacerlo y tengo que ver a ver, porque al final eh, creo que en la Billy Jean Cup se juega el 1 y el 3, esto empieza el 10, 
eh, pues hay un poco de margen donde igual puedo hacer algo para intentar ayudar al equipo. Eh, es complicado, pero yo quiero intentarlo y hablaré con la capitana a ver si puedo gestionarlo todo. Gracias, muchas felicidades. Merci. Last question for David. Paula, eh, quería preguntarte por, bueno, tú has hablado muchas veces de los problemas que sufriste de ansiedad, de depresión, de salud mental y de lo importante que es para ti traer esta conversación al tenis, especialmente en un día como hoy que has llegado pues, a una cima y estás en un momento muy dulce. Eh, ¿Qué supone también haber llegado hasta aquí, ¿no? después de todo eso que sufriste y padeciste en el pasado? Para mí significa mucho, para mí es lo más especial porque es lo que decía en estos días que iba ganando y yo me acuerdo de eso, no me acuerdo ahora que todo va bien, no, tengo memoria y sé todo lo que he pasado y, y, se ha, y lo he sufrido mucho y he tenido que trabajarlo mucho y, y es lo que digo, he pasado por momentos de, de depresión, de tener que estar tratándome, entonces de no haber sentido al tenis a, a me, que me costaba mucho, a, a ver momentos a por momentos eh, pensar que nunca estaría aquí y después de todo lo que he sufrido en eh, poder estarlo y, y al final una cosa que también es un poco la realidad que al final lo estoy con 23 años que al final eh, la gente es eh, muchas prisas muchas prisas que yo creo que lo he sufrido mucho eso expect expectativas prisas que con 20 21 hay que ganar estos torneos y cada uno tiene su tiempo y creo que también quiero remarcar mucho eso porque hay niñas jóvenes que se piensan que con 17 tienen que ser lo, lo mejor y no es así, hay gente que gana torneos con 30 y creo que hay que tener mucha paciencia y no, y no crear toda, todas esas expectativas a la gente. Gracias, Paula. Disfruta de esta gran victoria. Gracias. Yeah.